So it's uh, Mike Butcher with Vocosis and I'm uh, blogging at the, the uh, Future of Web Apps uh, conference and I'm just going to talk to uh, Gareth Knight here who is with Technovated, technovated.com if you can see that. Um, and Gareth, we've just been in a session about um, uh, about um, the Silicon Valley culture versus European culture. Yeah. Uh, what, what's your what's your view generally about this subject? I think there's two things that I well that I think are really important. One is that there's a, a different culture uh, between the Americans and the British. British people tend to be more risk averse. Um, there's also a bit of a lack of fear. Sorry, a, a lack of not like a fear of failing. So that creates a, a risk aversion which people you know prevents people from doing stuff really. Um, it's a very big step to take out, looking at you, mm. Okay. Mm. So it's a very big step to take out and to just go and do something without having a lot of money and without having a lot of security. So that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. The second thing is, is that people in America are more used to failing. Um, and with failure comes learning. And I think that, you know, having had a, a British girlfriend um, and having a few British friends, that fear of failure is a thing. So it's kind of a, it's a, uh, a negative cycle, if you will. I think that's the big thing. The second thing is that the market's not big enough, I don't think. So when, you, when you're trying to create something, the market's not as big as it is in the US. So you go, well, how are we going to build something that's not going to be big enough, we're not going to make enough money. But that shouldn't stop you, you should build something globally. So I think that those are the two prevailing mindsets that I've seen. Um, and I think that's what's holding a lot of people back. The, the thing that's underscoring all of that is that there isn't a big community. Not nearly as big as in Chicago, uh, Silicon Valley, New York, um, where else? Seattle. There's, there's massive communities there, whereas here there, there's probably one fifth of those communities. Is it more broken up? Yeah, it's more fragmented, more broken up. I see the same people all the time. Um, the people that I do see at conferences, I don't really see again. So it's, you know, you, 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 there's no uh, mass of people that create the support network of, of help and friends and skills and, and referrals and all of that kind of stuff. But what are some of the advantages, would you say, that we've got here in Europe and the UK? I think people here are, to some extent, more creative, um, more open-minded. Um, I think that there's a... Well, there's the geographical benefit of being able to appeal to more markets quicker because you're closer, so you can appeal to all the different European markets. Um, and if you do something that's in kind of geographically right for those markets, you can do very well very quickly. I think that's the thing that people don't really think about is that you can do that. It doesn't take a lot of money to get different people to translate stuff to you. Um, and I think the other thing is, is there's, well, I'm a South African, so being able to travel and being able to get to those markets is really easy. If you're coming from the States, you've got a, a 20, 30 hour flight. That's a big thing. Um, and I think also things are probably a little bit cheaper here in some ways um, to be able to travel, to be able to do stuff. Although living in London is very expensive, so mm. you know, people who live in Oxford, Cambridge, etc., might be a bit easier for them. I'm not sure, I haven't experienced that. Mm. Um, I think you need to weigh those things up. And what's your impressions of the Future of Web Apps conference so far? Um, it's pretty cool. Um, if you stay on the blogosphere and you know a lot of people and you read stuff, I think a lot of the stuff is rehashed and you, you keep on hearing the same themes and the same memes. Um, so a lot of the stuff isn't that new. What I find more interesting is being able to talk to people directly and interact with them directly. So the people that you hear speaking, you can actually sit down and talk to. Um, and then the new people that you meet, the people who ask questions, the people who've got interesting things to say. That stuff for me is, is where the real value is in a conference like this. Um, and the third thing is, is that every once in a while something new pops up that you haven't seen before and that's really cool as well. And there's been one or two things that we've seen, one or two people as well. And uh, that's awesome. What, and then what sticks in your mind from so far? Um, there was a, a talk for the VCs yesterday. Uh, I can't remember Ben yeah. Ben Holmes. His talk was really really awesome. Um, I think it's probably the best description of how VC works that I've heard before. I really enjoyed the Last FM guys. They they're doing some really amazing stuff. They seem to really down to earth, really chill out, really cool. But they're doing really really technically difficult stuff with massive you know massive numbers uh, of users, and that's that's just so encouraging and fantastic to see them doing that. Um, I think it was nice to listen to Kevin Rose, although the stuff he said wasn't particularly inspiring. It was just nice to see the guy and to listen to him and hear what they've done and what the numbers are and how successful Dig has actually become. Um, I think for me those are the main things. Um, 
Tara, mm. Tara's was good, Tara Hunt. Yeah, yeah Tara Hunt. Her talk was quite pretty good as well. Yeah, 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 that was, it was interesting, it was a bit short there, but it should have been maybe a bit longer. Mm. Um, yeah. and, um, and what are you doing yourselves with uh, Technovated.com? What's your, what's your idea at the moment? Well, we're, we're doing two things, we're not, I'm not trying to focus on two things, we're doing service works, that's the one thing, and that service work, the profit that we're getting from that, we're putting back into product development. So the product development, um, we, we've taken on board the Seagull framework, um, Demian Turner is one of the, well he's the maintainer of the Seagull framework, he's joined us, we're working with him, so we're using that as our platform for developing our applications. At the moment we're looking at solving problems around workflow, so within an organization, um, using APIs, um, and then the second thing is we're looking at availability, so how can you solve questions around around when someone is available and when they aren't. Um, most importantly, we're looking at how we can sell that. And that's one of the things, that the problems I have within an in industry, you get a lot of guys who are really good technically, but they don't know how to sell. And so they're great ideas for flatten their faces because they can't sell. And, and that's what we're trying to figure out now. And how are you funding what you're doing? Um, credit cards, um, profits from work, uh, trying to get higher rates for service work, um, and working bloody hard. And, um What's the cut? You're trying to do something interesting with your office space, aren't you? Yeah, um, I've, I've been working from home for a long time, so I know what it's like to work from home. And about two weeks ago, we moved into our office space in Putney, Putney Bridge. We've got a view of Putney Bridge uh, on the north side of the river. Um, we've bought a big space, um, and we're basically starting to rent it out to people. So we're doing, at the moment, we've got three, uh, three web apps in development in the office. We've got about six or seven people. We've got space for 10 to 12 people. We can expand, and we're trying to create a place where there's a culture of creativity, um, a culture of ingenuity and innovation on the web um, with a whole bunch of people that can help each other, can talk to each other, can uh, create momentum um, and we're trying to do it as cheap as possible. At the same time we've got access to lawyers, accountants, sysadmins, we've got a whole bunch of servers down which people can use for development um, and most importantly we tick all the boxes in terms of the different skills needed to do stuff. So if there's a problem you have um, or, or that someone might have, we can take it, we can, we can help and, them. Uh, and somebody has to rent a desk off you, or can they just swing by and sit on your sofa? Um, if they're going to be there for a long time, then they need to rent a desk. If they want to swing by and need a bit of Wi-Fi for the day, um, then I'm happy to let them come and sit down at the desk. And uh, as long as they um, bring blonde girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> or possibly not longer. <laughs> yeah, or possibly not longer. Yeah. No, but um, seriously, the, the, the desk space is, is there for monthly, uh, weekly um, rental and the, the free Wi-Fi is that's there. Right. Come and use it. Gareth Knight from Technovated, thanks very much. Yeah, yeah, okay. bit, um, interesting, I don't know how it came out, but it's the first time I've ever done anything like that. Okay. Oops, hold on.